Hi everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Puzzle Agent 2. I'm Xander77 and when we last left off, I was in the middle of solving a puzzle and also in the middle of a rant. Let's continue with ranting, shall we? Because this bugs me quite a bit. For one thing, why is the Lunar Ray prototype uh, treated as irreplaceable? I mean, I understand why the government would protect or retrieve it, but what purpose would breaking it serve? I mean, are we operating by common comic book logic where every prototype technology is ir irreplaceable? Because that's not something that was pointed out in the game before this. Second of all, exactly how are uh, the remaining astronauts feral screaming animals when all they've done so far, on screen at least, is sedate Nelson and return him to his inn, which doesn't seem like the action of uh, feral creatures. After all, uh, if we claim that it's the work of the unknown agents, well, that's the likely since apparently they've just arrived in the Instoggins. So, a lot of the plot doesn't make sense. When the game ends, I think we should discuss it with the thread. See if you can make sense of things. Oh yeah, the solution, well, it's fairly obvious as long as you... There are two ways the rock could bounce off the trees and some... Uh, Bruski uh, apostle in the thread has pointed out both solutions, so well done him. A masterful distraction. And it works. Now we've got to Those shut down that ray. Obviously. The only safe place for that ray is at the bottom of Lake Spin. Keep an eye on the site while I check it out. Agent Tethers, if the government gets that weapon, they'll be able to turn anyone into feral screaming lunatics, just like my crewmates. See my rant a moment ago. So, yeah, just throwing the rock is enough to get to the lunar ray and its prototype technology retrieved from, I don't know, some mad scientist who only built one in comic book fashion. We just never heard about it. That's it! That's their home! But the ray, it's repelling them, keeping them from returning home. I've got to disable it. So, well, all we have to do to help the gnomes out and help things out in Scoggins is move these electrons to shut down the lunar ray. It's... Oh, yeah, it couldn't be that easy. Our masterful plan failed and the agents aren't 100% incompetent. I'm shocked. Are you shocked? Because shocked I'm shocked. The story was that it was for my own safety. I guess I should be thankful they didn't send me to jail. Yeah, why didn't they? I mean, it's hard to take a threat, well, not seriously, but as a threat if they're so incompetent. I still can't see how everything is connected. I guess there's nothing to do in our room, except... I'd never make it out through the window. Yeah, I suppose we're stuck here. For a while, nothing we can do, really. I don't see any obvious... Okay, let's answer the phone. Hello? Nelson, finally! Oh, hello, Jim. Listen, it's about these Scoggins tapes. Enough with the tapes already! Yeah, I'm really, really sorry about that. But you've got to hear this. I think you left your recorder on or, or something. It's labeled Sighting Hotel Alley. That's when I saw one of the hidden people whispering to Bo Murphy. There's this weird sound. I can't make it out. That sound. It was playing under Olaf Velhoven's reel to reel. That explains it. Thanks, Jim. Uh, okay, but what does. I figured out how Olaf Velhoven was able to solve the problem of lunacy. 
It's the hidden people. He was inviting them into his cabin to speak to him. I've got to get back to Olaf's cabin. And that means finding a way out of this room. How ever could we escape from a room monitored by uh, agents from an unknown agency? I mean, they must be professional at their jobs. No, you just have to push your furniture against the window so they can't look as you cross the room. So very professional, so very threatening. We move the bed to the um, left corner and that's it. From that point we can just push the dressers around and Nelson can leave. A masterful escape once more. Well done. However did we do it? Oh, and apparently the agents from the unknown agency are actually from the secret service, so there goes that joke about not knowing where they're from. Now how did Olaf get the hidden people to talk to him? You know, it would have been cute if the agency they were from kept changing, but no. So here we have four relatively simple puzzles. I feel as though just puzzles that were thought up of during the development but the makers couldn't find a place for them were stuck into this final uh, moment, I guess. And of course I chose the most annoyingly, well not difficult, just bothersome puzzle to start with. You can see how it goes, you just range the stars around and some of the pieces look fairly similar so you can make a mistake and not notice it if your eyesight is a bit problematic or if you have a bad monitor. So that's great puzzle design right there. And yeah, about the secret agents I'm still not over that. You know, it would have been a fairly neat joke if Director Jennings went, I don't know what agency they're from, and then with every puzzle, every free interaction, they would have been CIA, FBI, Secret Agency, Secret Service, NSA. But no, there's Secret Service, which is probably the least uh, related agency to Space Matters, but sure. It's just one of those things about the plot design in this game that a lot of opportunities are missed. Okay, and you see, the, the this puzzle is a bit bothersome, having to change every piece around. Yeah, and it looks about right now. Yeah. Alright, now it makes sense. Yes? No? Time to submit. Let's see how that works out. Spoilers, it works out poorly. I've messed up on some tiny little bit of the puzzle that looked exactly like every other bit. And that's the right way to do it. By the way, if my commentary is lagging a bit, sorry. Uh, just at this moment in the commentary I had a phone call from the IF Museum inviting me for a reunion, so I have to re-record the whole thing. 
In case you're interested, I'll probably go there. You know, if only to burn the place down and salt the ground on which it was built. I mean, I gave my promise to do so at some point, so it's only fair. Right, once you start making a few pater patterns, the rest work out. Sure, except for tiny details. The other puzzles are a lot easier, thankfully. Right. Well, if two Earths, if half the power of two Earths is 30, then each Earth gives 30, and the third Earth is 10. Um, okay. The two. The two suns are divided between two Earths, each Earth receives 30, that means that each sun gives 30, and the other sun, the remaining one, gives 10. Fairly basic. Mm. Right. As I was saying, I really believe some of the puzzles here were just left over from the well, the from um, game development because they were leftover puzzles that couldn't find their way into the plot of the rest of the game, so they were stuck there. Jesus, why is that so hard to articulate? Right. Basically, um, the raccoons move from the pier into the water and onto the shore. We don't have three raccoons in the water, that means that the three raccoons on the shore are the first picture and the three raccoons on the pier are the last picture. Uh, that's basically it. Then you just follow the numbers to see what works. Only one puzzle left. And it's another reflection puzzle. Another one of those that I at least had to try and fail at first. Because for me, the angles of the satellite's reflections are not at all obvious. Okay. So this is going to be a bit roundabout if we had a few more. Uh, uh, satellites that reflected in the other direction we could have made a straight line but this works I do wonder what happened to Olaf you no know, if he came up with the equation did it commune with the gnomes and how did that work out for him if he ran into the astronauts, well, they should have just sedated him and sent him back to his cabin, right? No? Well, we'll talk about it when we analyze the game once it ends. If anyone's interested in analyzing it. I am. Right. And the only puzzle left is uh, Nelson himself. Figuring out the lunacy algorithm. Uh, yeah, this one I needed some hints for because... I have I had no idea what this particular S logarithm symbol does. Once I figured it had to be at the beginning of the equation, and the parentheses uh, have have to follow the plus. They can't be two pluses in a row. Things made a bit of sense, even though I still have no idea what the equation itself does. Not the point. Once again, overthinking will destroy you if you. Uh, if you overthink puzzles in this game. Uh, 
No wonder it took all of over 20 years to solve lunacy since lunacy is not actually a thing. And, as you can see, the Secret Service agents are incredibly competent. Kirchhoff's principle, rotation affects Perhaps. orientation. Eighth dimensional combinatorics, the center Yeah, clicking on them does nothing, really. Um, all we can do is solve the puzzle. The, the Black Moon, Did, do you remember that from various rentings of uh, Scoggins' residence? That's relevant. So we have time enough to solve the puzzle this time around, I'm not sure why, maybe all the guns the secret service agents have have been replaced by lifelike walkie talkies. That That's still topical, right? I mean, it's only been, what, five years? Incredibly relevant topical humor there. So we need to move three electrons into three recept receptors. We basically move them to the left, stick the middle electron behind the block, move the other two forward into the receptors, then move the last electron. That's very interesting, but why isn't Nelson dead now? That, that did it. So the lunar ray turns people into holler monkeys? Because the astronauts sure weren't the astronauts sure weren't Howler Markins. Oh! Hey! Ancient number one! You think we should have done something there? Nah, Ancient number two. We're good. We're fucking golden. So here's the final puzzle of the game more or less. We need to connect the four objects in the right order. When I first played the game I did so on the laptop and let me tell you this is not a puzzle you want to solve using a touchpad. Not at all. In fact, I completely failed solving it even the second time around mostly because it functions a bit oddly. Most connect puzzles in this game have you connect one object to the other and then things just mm, connect automatically, you know, they snap too, like glue. In this case you have to keep drawing the line and across all four objects and as I pointed out before, uh, the game doesn't register your motions very often, the controls are a bit sluggish. It's not a pleasant puzzle to complete. And I'm pretty sure I will be failing it this time around as well.
Welcome back, Special Agent Tethers. Hi, Jim. Anything exciting happen while I was away? Oh, never mind that. I got the latest issue of Puzzle Sensei. Um, think you could give me a hand with this one? Oh yeah, that wasn't the last puzzle in the game. This one is. I'm not sure why. Well, all Monosaki puzzles are about dates, so it's November, it's January, February, etc. The last one has 31 uh, days in it, so you add that up, 151. I'm not sure why this is the last puzzle, it's just a bit anticlimactic. Anticlimactic. so disappointed Jim that was a hard one it's not that I'm just going to miss your help when I'm transferred transferred yeah I've been relocated to the tundra division Arctic Circle outpost when the directors found out I'd warned you they were sending agents to Scoggins they called it a breach of protocol oh Jim I, I feel terrible here take this my entire back collection of Puzzle Sensei magazines, since issue number one. Wow! But aren't they full of the answers? I use tracing paper. You don't miss a thing, Nelson. Hey, is that a postcard from the Davners? Good to see they're happy anyway. Yeah, happy. What could go wrong in Bermuda? Dum, dum, dum. Sequel hook. Uh, the credit sequence starts here, but don't stop watching yet, and don't stop checking the thread. There's still one more ch episode to go. Some uh, post-credits puzzles. So, um, I actually ranted quite a bit at the beginning of the episode, so I have little left to rant about now that the game is over and you pretty much know the story. I, f I liked the first puzzle agent game quite a bit and Puzzle Agent 2 was probably the first game that really disappointed me. There was there were a lot of crazy directions they could go with the story and they went with pretty much the obvious direction actually. I mean all the things included in this game have been foreshadowed in Puzzle Agent 1, they just haven't been put together properly, tightly. There are too many plot holes, the whole thing feels a bit disjointed. Uh, quick comment on the uh, credits. I do love the sound design. The voice work was solid all around, the music was pretty good. My main problems with the game are the art occasionally, the interface, the interface kinda sucked, and the story. You know, there were a lot of crazier directions they could have went. You know, if you start with space and the moon, etc., there are a lot of interesting things to do with that. Oh well. It's still a game I would recommend, mostly because it's fairly cheap and for a lot of people it's not about the plot, it's about the puzzles. The puzzles aren't bad, if occasionally re recycled from the first game. Uh, let me know what you thought. Just join the discussion in the thread. Um, and stick around for more uh, post-credits puzzles. There's still a grand prize to be won, etc, etc. What else? I'd like to thank everyone on the Something Awful forums, the people who followed the thread, even though it's not over yet, I'd like to thank you right now. And more importantly, I'd like to th thank the people in the tech support for it. I'm incredibly technologically obtuse and they've been very patient with me, helping me figure out how to do fairly basic video let's plays so thanks for that 
And I hope you had fun with this LP, even though it's not over yet. Still. <laughs>